Hello class, my name is Glenn Harris, and I am your professor for Business Law 1. I'm super excited to be teaching this class this uh, semester. A um, couple quick notes. The best way to get a hold of me is through the email listed on the syllabus. So please look at your syllabus and um, my email to my office, my work email will be listed there. As far as the syllabus goes, obviously everyone is provided with a syllabus that is online. Um, please look it over. If you have any questions about the syllabus, contact me. A little bit about me. My name is Glenn Harris. I am a Florida Bar Licensed Attorney. Um, I am a founding partner at Hensel Bailey & Harris. Uh, we do a wide variety of legal um, issues, but one of our main departments is business. And in business, we do a lot of different things. Um, a lot of it is based upon people just wanting to form their business and write contracts with vendors. They're just trying to get started and get it done right. Employee contracts, no compete agreements. Uh, additionally, there's um, contract disputes that do arise as someone's been in business that, that we litigate for uh, clients. And overall, many of the business issues that arise in our law firm are just uh, questions on how to best curb any liability. So from people getting injured on property to you know employees th that could become disgruntled that sue the employer, just how to eliminate liability. A lot of it is just questions. So as we get through it um, and we, when we move forward, we're gonna touch on a bunch of topics, okay? And I'd like to start with, before I get into the topic that we're gonna discuss, a little bit of, I told you about me, a little bit about you. Even though you can't reply, I do want to tell each of you that I am very happy to see that you're in the class and you're pursuing a higher education. Education is vital. Um, I can tell you as an, as an employer inside of the business realm, we look at education on every application that comes in. And it doesn't even matter what your degree in really, uh, we just want to see that someone is teachable and has the initiative to follow through on something they start. So that's what getting a degree really does. It shows me, the employer, that if I give you a task, you'll finish it. See, that's, that's a key part. But here nor there, um, a little bit about how I actually go about teaching. Now, I am not the type of teacher that's going to grab the book and be like, okay, students, turn to page 88. Look on the left-hand side at where it says contracts. And the definition of a contract is blah, 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 blah. Okay? Okay, we'll go with this. Contract is uh, the agreement of two or more parties, uh, which can be either in orally or in written form. Okay? Just throwing that out there. Okay. Then I, a lot of teachers will be like, now turn to page 89. One of the questions arises is which contracts must be in writing? And let's look at the contracts that must be in writing. Now, if you'll notice down on the page of, uh, down on page 90, it talks about, you know, when it talks about two or more parties, what is an actual party? Let's read together this section. Okay, I don't do any of that stuff. Um, not that it's bad. I just, as a student, didn't find it, it engaged me. I would, I would lose track too quickly. So this is more like a actual lecture standard inside of a university where I'm going to talk about a topic like contract. Okay. And it's one of the chapters in our book. And, you know, I mean, it, it'll follow closely along, but it won't be word for word in order. Okay. The concept is that you read the chapter before the lecture. So you have a general idea of what's going on and then I kind of fill in the blanks huh so I mean what are the types of you know videos and lectures are you guys gonna see this semester um, and I don't know if we'll get to all of them uh, but I mean we'll try so let's talk about a few of them okay uh, one of them uh, would be intro to the law I mean, that's kind of what we're doing today okay so intro to the law I mean how do we get a law how does a law get passed okay well, a law is written by our legislature. So as we all know from government classes and things of that nature, there are three branches of government. There's the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch, okay? The legislative branch, that's our senators and our House of Representatives, people like that. 
who write the law, okay? The executive branch is the branch of the government who enforces the law. So give you an example. The legislatures write a law that says, hey, in all businesses, you must have an exit sign that is lit, that is in English, Spanish, and has a picture of a guy running through a door, okay? For people who can't read either. I, I don't know, but that's an example. Then the executive branch, okay, enforces that law. So the executive branch has a branch of their government that is the business licensing department. And they go to your business and make sure that you have this sign, okay? And if you don't get it, you can't get your license. So they're enforcing it. Or they go to pre-existing businesses and make sure I have the sign. If I don't have the sign, they fine me, okay? The judicial branch explores the question of, is it constitutional to make and mandate a business to have this sign? Which is a question that must be answered because me, the business owner, now I have to redo all my signs. So I gotta pay for them, I have to get them installed, all those types of things. So that is kind of how a law works with government is the legislature writes it, the executive branch enforces it, and then obviously the judiciary determines if it is constitutional. So that would be uh, kind of where we're at today is we're just an introduction to law. I'm going to try and throw out some just general topics to you that are kind of based in the actual videos you'll see later on, but it's your intro into an overview of what we're going to do. Another thing that we're going to talk about is ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution. Huge topic. Here's the deal, is that going to trial is immensely expensive, okay? So say, for instance, you own a grocery store and you get your shipment of tomatoes in, okay? You open up the box and they're rotten, okay? And you call the guy that you bought these 10 crates of tomatoes from, you're like, uh, tomatoes are rotten. And he's like, nope, not my fault, your fault. You didn't allow them to be stored properly in the proper location or you were closed and we went to drop them off so we had to leave them outside and the bugs got to them however our contract says that you have to carry normal business hours and this was four o'clock on a thursday afternoon whatever it is it doesn't matter the concept is that if you and you the grocery store and the produce um tomato guy are arguing and need to go to trial it costs fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to hire an attorney and go to trial, do depositions and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's over tomatoes. It's not a very good use of your money. Where alternate dispute resolution is an is an opportunity for someone to go to like say mediation. Like say you're both part of some type of better business bureau, okay? And they have a and they have a program that if two of their businesses are arguing over something, they hire a mediator for a hundred bucks. So 50 bucks each. And you go before a mediator and they build you some options to get through the process. That would be an example of alternative dispute resolution. So instead of paying 15 to 20 grand to go to trial, you're paying 50 bucks a piece to have someone come in and, and educate you on the proper thing and try and get you guys to resolution. Uh, so it's a good area and we'll talk about it. Another one is business ethics. Ethics are very important inside of business law. It's always going to be advantageous to you as a business person to be ethical. I can promise you that the non-ethical business owners end up in trial, paying that 15 to 20 grand uh, you know, in trial costs because they didn't do things the ethical way. So we're going to talk about ethics. Constitutional law is a huge topic in which we're going to really explore as well. Let's talk about a couple of the different styles of constitutional law and how it relates to business law. Um, a big one is freedom of speech. Okay, so we all know that I have as a person freedom of speech. It's the First Amendment right. So there's certain things I can't say, like I can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater. Okay, there's certain things we can't say. However, for the most part, I can say whatever's on my mind, okay, without fear of the government arresting me. All right. Businesses have freedom of speech too. 
And it sounds kind of weird. You're like, wait, what do you mean? How can a business have an actual right to speak? It's a business. It's an entity. They, they can't talk. We can't audibly say something. Well, I mean, that does make sense, but that's not what the U.S. Supreme Court says. The U.S. Supreme Court says that businesses have freedom of speech, too. And how do businesses speak? I'll give you a couple examples. One of them is through advertising. Makes sense. Billboards. Okay. Another way is through political campaign donations. That is a form of speech. It is a form of a business saying this is the political party I support or the candidate that I support. It's all part of speech because speech is just an expression of, uh, of, of a message that we're trying to relay. It doesn't have to be audible. I mean, body language is a form of speech. So, so when we think of speech, it does in the Constitution, and the kind of the way we're going to unpack it in the class is that we initially just think, oh, well, it's when I talk. Well, yes, but there's more speech than just audible. So we will uh, explore the constitutional law aspects of business. Criminal law and procedure is a topic that we're going to get into. A lot of crimes are committed inside of businesses. And some of them are by business owners. Some of them are by employees. Okay, So we're going to kind of break them out and figure out what are the normal types of business crimes? What are their penalties? What are some things we can do to avoid them? Uh, anything in that realm because we don't want to go to jail <laughs> for uh, doing something improper inside of our business. The next topic, which is a big topic we're definitely going to get into, is torts. Okay, Torts are civil wrongs. They are the sibling of criminal law. So criminal law is when you do something wrong against the state. Okay, So there's a law that says you can't do this and you break the law and the police come get you. That's criminal law. Torts are civil law infractions, so civil wrongs. And there's some overlap, like some crimes are also uh, torts and some torts are not crimes. I'll give you an example, battery. So if I walk up to you and I punch you in the face, that is battery, that is definitely a crime. Criminal law, going to jail. Well, it's also a civil wrong because say I broke your nose. Well, now you've been injured, okay, in the action of the crime. And that injury is a crime against me personally, not against society, not against the state. You've injured me and I had to pay to fix my broken nose and I should be reimbursed. That would be an example of how a crime can also be a tort. Uh, an example of one that's not a crime um, but is a tort would, or, or excuse me, one that is a crime but not a tort would be a DUI. So if I am driving my car and I am drunk and the officer pulls me over, I haven't been in an accident, none of that kind of stuff. I just get pulled over drinking and driving. Well, that's a crime and I'm going to jail. Now, if I'm drinking and driving and I hit your car, now it's both. So I committed a crime of drinking and driving and I damaged your car so I have to reimburse you money. So from a civil standpoint, I need to fix your car. So that is where we can get into a point where a, a crime is also a tort, or it doesn't have to be a tort. It doesn't have to be a civil wrong. And there are torts that aren't crimes. So for instance, an example, you own a restaurant and patron walks in and slips on water that was left on the floor on accident. So you, you messed up, you, you know, someone spilled water, you didn't clean it up, it slipped and fell. Well, that's not a crime. I mean, you're not going to jail because someone slipped and falled in your, in your restaurant. However, if you were negligent and I was injured from my slip and fall, like now I have my back's hurt and I got to go to the chiropractor 28 times, well, yeah, you got to pay. So that's a civil wrong, not a criminal wrong. So there is some overlap, but those are two very important topics that we will talk about and there will be videos on and there's sections inside of our book on and we'll make sure that we hit those. Um, additionally, the, the final one we'll talk about in our little intro to the law is contract law. This is a big topic. I mean, by far the biggest topic in business law is contract law. 
because businesses run on contracts. I mean, it's contract 24 seven. I mean, it's just nothing but contracts. And I guess in the beginning of the video, we kind of talked about uh, some contracts need to be in writing. Other contracts can be done just audibly through, uh, through oral communication. So let's talk about it. Here's an example. So I say to you, if you will go to Walmart and buy me a Snickers bar, I'll give you $5. Okay? Nothing's in writing. You go to Walmart, you get the Snickers bar, you bring it to me and I don't give you $5. That is a breach of contract. Okay? You can sue me for the $5. It doesn't have to be in writing. Okay? However, there are certain contracts that must be in writing in order to be effective. So if they're not in writing, they don't count. You can't sue them for the money. Um, there are six. Generally, there are six of them. They are contracts for marriage. So prenuptial agreements must be in writing. Or your marriage license must be in writing. Anything to do with marriage must be in writing. Contracts that are a year in length or longer. So if I said to you, hey, I want you to go to Walmart and I want you to buy me a Snickers bar every day for two years and I will pay you. $1,000, okay? That must be in writing because it's longer than a year. So we need to get that in writing. So two years comes down the line, you're like, okay, I've given you this Snickers bar every day for two years, I'd like my money. That contract is not gonna be effective, okay? You're gonna have a, you're gonna have a hard time collecting your money. Now there are other devices in the law, but generally contracts over a year must be in writing. Uh, contracts for land. so. Real estate deeds, things like that, house closings, all that has to be in. If it's real estate, it's got to be on paper. Next one is executorships. So if you have a will and you have someone's an executor of the will and they're going to make sure that the aspects of the contract or will are going to be executed in a manner, that has to be in writing. Uh, next one is goods $500 or more. So if a good is $500 or more, it's got to be in writing. The last one is surety ships. Okay, so surety ships, that's where you guarantee or co-sign a note. So here's a good example. I tell you, if you go to the store for me one time and get me a Snickers bar, I'll give you $5. That can be done verbally, okay? We're good. So let's just play this out on how it works with a surety where, where it becomes something that needs to be in writing. So I say to you, I want you to go to the store I want you to buy me one time, buy me a Snickers bar, I'll give you $5. And you say, I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I don't know you. And my buddy Joe is sitting next to me, and you know Joe. And Joe says, listen, if he don't pay the five bucks, I will. Please go get the Snickers. And you're like, well, I know Joe is good for it. I believe Joe. So yes, I will go do it. Now the contract must be in writing. Because it's a surety ship. So he's guaranteeing the Snickers bar will be delivered and he will and once it's delivered he'll give the five dollars he's guaranteeing the, the the contract will be you know executed properly and will there be no breaches in it so that must be in writing so that's kind of an example of contract law and it's a very big topic and super important inside of business if you're going to be a manager inside the business realm a board of director inside that business realm, or you just want to go out and own your own business, contract law will by far be the biggest area inside the legal process that you will deal with it because you will deal with it every day, all day. That is what businesses ran on, it's on contracts. So we're gonna spend some time on it. Um, as we, so that's kind of like an intro to the different things that we're gonna do inside of our class here. Um, let's talk about business law and the, the aspects of it. Now, um, please keep in mind, like I said, uh, we are super excited about the course. Any information as far as uh, links to the videos, uh, midterms, quizzes, discussion posts, any of that stuff that will be required, I always send that out through email. So I try to do a good job of every week sending you guys a link to a video along with an email describing kind of what's going on inside of our class and giving you an opportunity to, uh, to, to keep up to date with everything. So as I leave you, um, 
in our first video, which is you know this basic introduction to business law. I want to tell you guys first off, I am super excited to be uh, uh, the professor of this class. I know you guys are gonna do good. Um, as far as all of our classes, any class I teach, whether it's this one or, or another class, if you've taken me, I'm not interested in attempting to trick you on exams, anything like that. We will have reviews before you know our final exam, or we'll have a video, and it'll be me going over the exam and what you need to know, and 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 giving you some tips and tricks on how to do a good job. As far as your um, textbook goes. When I write the exams, I always am looking for uh, things I find in a textbook. So a lot of our textbooks, you know, at the end of every chapter, there's like a chapter summary uh, or some review questions or food for thought questions. I look at those when I write my exam. I also look for definitions. I like definitions. So when I look through the book, I'm looking for anything that's bolded or italicized. Anything like that is is good. Um, but we will definitely go over it. And one final note, inside of business law, if we come across a word that's in Latin, which we will, okay? Because it's the root, you know, so, so it's going to be a Latin word. Um, several of those I always put on the exam. They may be the right answer, they may be the wrong answer. But they're, they're very, very interesting words that we learn, like voir dire is an example. So voir dire is jury selection. Okay, so when you go to trial, there will be a jury. And the selection of that jury is called voir dire. So it's a Latin word, it's fun. It'll be on the exam, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Um, now, as far as I had told you on the syllabus is my work email address. You can email me through Canvas or at my work email address. Normally, my work email address, you'll get a faster response um, than you will on my Canvas, but I will respond in a reasonable time on Canvas. Uh, it's just my work email. I'm sitting there at my desk and it just goes off, so I'm able to uh, normally answer it quickly. Additionally, like when I'm in court or something of that nature, I have my computer up and my email is on, but my Canvas isn't. So I'm able to see it because uh, it auto sends me a notification that I got an email. And if I'm not doing anything inside of that court here, like, like I'm waiting for it to be my turn, then I can get in there and, and answer your questions and things of that nature. Um, please look at your syllabus. If you have any questions, shoot me an email about the syllabus. Um, all of the course outcomes are on there. Uh, a lot of uh, important information is on the syllabus, like the grading scale, a schedule of events. Uh, now keep in mind that Everything in the syllabus can be changed at my discretion, just based upon any factor that you know is deemed necessary at the time to do it. Uh, I will also let you know that in regards to business law, um, it is incredibly important that you understand that our purpose in this class is not to teach you to be an attorney. That's for law school, okay? The purpose of this class is to give you a basic introduction of business, okay? So you can determine for yourself, moving forward, what aspects interest you or are relevant to your industry so you can get more information about those things, okay? And I encourage each and every one of you that once you do become a business leader in this world and uh, you're out there running your own cake decorating shop or you're the manager of a hotel chain or, or anything in those regards, make sure you stay ethical. Business ethics are important. And find yourself a good, competent attorney that will advise you on the law. Now, if you come out of this class, and this happens every semester, I, I don't know if it's happened every semester, but most semesters, I will get an email from a student that says, wow, the law is so interesting. How can I get more information? Or I want to be an attorney. Don't hesitate to email me at the end of the class if you're looking to broaden your horizons in the business law realm. 
I will point you in the right direction and uh, hopefully be able to uh, to answer your questions and, and, and let you move forward in this in this uh, endeavor of yours and getting your degree and moving out into the world of business. So thank you for everything. Now um, be on the lookout for the next link. Um, it'll come probably next week and uh, it will uh, cover a topic that uh, that you know inside of our textbook and we'll get to work on uh, seeing if we can't get each and every one of y'all an A in this class. That's my goal. It should be yours as well. Thank you guys and have a, a blessed rest of your day.